Yeah, hello. So this is the third part of Astrological Sojourns. And this is part three, so I'll start with the introduction, personality versus individuality, emotional body, astrological sojourns, and planetary sojourns. So basically, I divide my spiritual studies into three main areas. Number one is astrological sojourns. As souls or spiritual beings, we belong to the universe and we will eventually return to the universe. For the moment, let us enjoy our experience on planet Earth. The second main part is awakening the Christ within. So applying the, the search for God lessons, including meditation and prayer. Whether you are lost or not, eventually all paths lead to the Christ. And third main part of our spiritual studies is becoming the initiate of the Christ. So studying and applying the process found in the book of Revelation as a spiritual course of initiation. So we're going to start with the introduction. Uh, this is made up of some readings that I put together. For to be sure, each soul manifests in other dimensions through sojourns in the environs of the earth. Each appearance is an opportunity for the soul in its relationships with conditions, experiences, times, and the fellow man to manifest that it has stressed that ideal which draws one closer to or separates one from that creative force. Have ye not wondered why in the sacred writings it is said that God no longer spoke to man in visions or dreams? It is because man fed not his soul, his mind, upon things spiritual, thus closing the avenue or channel through which God may, might speak with the children of men. For only they who believe he is may make manifest that as a reality in their experience through material sojourns. There are those latent and manifested urges arising not only from the earthly sojourns, but from the astrological also. Not that the entity dwelt on the planet in human form or in a consciousness that is recognized in a three-dimensional plane, but in those phases of consciousness represented by the astrological sojourns as related to that in our own solar system. A place, a consciousness in which the entities or souls may manifest a consciousness in a manner as to either apply its relationships to others in conformity to a divine law or in a selfish or material minded nature without respect to the sources or the motivative influences. So basically, it doesn't matter what planet you go to, we apply the two two manners of relationships to God, and that is one is the selfish manner or conforming to the divine law, to God's laws. In interpreting the urges latent and manifested, these from the Akashic records here are indicated from two direct manners, those from the astrological sojourns and those from the earthly sojourns. So planetary sojourns and past lives. As we have often indicated from the records here, we find two outlines, urges arising from the earthly sojourns that find the greater expression through the emotional or sensory forces of the body and urges latent and manifested from astrological sojourns through those spheres of activity during the interims between the material sojourns, so that's between past lives or earthly lives, thus being a composite composite activity of the influence latent in the inner feelings or dreams and hopes of the entity. The astrological aspects are not as an influence because the entity was born under certain environments. But the position of the planets, the sun, the moon, and the stars in relation to the entity is governed by what the entity has done about universal consciousness, 
For the souls of men were given that pronouncement to rule that which had been created for their understanding, their enlightenment, their signs, and their seasons, and their years. Hence these have come about, the influence by those very forces bringing the activities as related to the whole. For each soul and the spirit thereof is a part of that universal consciousness of God. For all is of the spirit spiritual, but the life urge is God, the creative force, and the activities are recorded to the individual entity as its birthright. Thus, the varied experiences in astrological sojourns or in the material environments and surroundings as incarnate individuals are as periods of lessons in which an entity uses that in hand, and that to which the entity attains is governed according to the use of the opportunities presented. What has caused the recurrent experiences of waking during the night screaming Explain these experiences and advise the body as to just what to do about them. Looking into self and the choices which have been made respecting the spiritual import, you will find that there has been a conflict between the activity of the flesh and the mental and spiritual self. These produce upon the emotional self fear. These may only be wholly eliminated by making the mental and spiritual mind and the material or physical body coordinate, cooperative, consistent one with another. The astrological are as innate, or those often termed as the intuitive influences, hence they are at times construed to be outside forces, but are really the intuitive response of the inner self to outside influences, while the material sojourns make up the emotional self, or the self that responds through the emotions of the body as arise from associations of same. Mind is the builder, and the association then is both divine and material. Hence, those who become spiritual-minded dwell within the realms of soul forces, while those who are only material-minded become engrossed in material manifestations and oft lose self in same. While we find body, mind, and soul are faces of the experiences of an entity in materiality, these are but the manners through which the real ego or I am manifests. Then while the urges that arise from the astrological sojourns or aspects, as well as from the appearances of the entity in the earth, are influences, they are not greater than the will of self in its choice of what it will do about its concept of creative force or God in its experience. In the material sojourns, we will find influences to the real emotions of the entity, as we find in the astrological sojourns, as termed by many, urges arising from the latent forces, those that are just glimpsed within the mental self or becoming dreams, as it were, of the entity. As to the past life appearances, we find these become as the emotional influences, but tempered to be sure, with the influence from the astrological sojourns or the interims between the material manifestations. As to the appearances in the earth, those are given that influence the entity in the present. Those that through the emotional self as combined with the innate and the deeper spiritual or mental self make up the whole. For remember, you are in a three-dimensional consciousness. Hence, as body, mind, and soul make up thy tabernacle in the material world, thy experiences in the environs about the earth and thy experiences in the earth and in the present now make up that which is the emotional and the innate portion of its evolutionary self through the activities in reaching and in searching for the creative forces. Two. Personality versus uh, individuality. Personality is that which the entity consciously or unconsciously spreads out before others to be seen of others. As to whether you will say good morning to Jim or John and ignore Susan or not, these are parts of the personality. Because of some difference or because of say, some desire to be used or needed by that others would have to give. 
while individuality in that same circumstance would be, I wish to do this or that for Susan or Jim or John, because I would like for Jim or John or Susan to do this if conditions were reversed. One is for the universal consciousness that is part of the soul entity's activity. The other is the personal or the desire for recognition or the desire for the other individuals to recognize your personal superiority. These are variations to this individual entity. It isn't personality that is spiritual, but the individuality that is the personality of God or the sun in activity. In individuality, you may give the expression of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit without the destruction of the personality. A better definition of personality would be the radiation of the individuality of a being. For the purpose of an entity's entrance into the earth, and this I might apply to all, is to manifest the personality of God in the own individuality and personality. Personality is that you wish others to think and see. Individuality is that your soul prays, your soul hopes for, desires. When the individual makes the personality of the divine manifested in the personality of the, of the entity, and the individuality of the entity becomes one with the personality of God, we will find the attaining to that same experience as attaining the Holy Land not unto the satisfying of any phase of thy own personality, but to the glory of thy divinity and to the individuality of thy ideal. What would you suggest I do to improve my personality? Increase the force and influence of thy individuality, and thus may the personality be improved. Will this shine through thy personality? For well, thy body is indeed the temple of the living God, and the Christ becomes a personal companion in mind and in body, dependent upon the personality and individuality of the entity, as it makes practical application of the tenets and truths that are expressed. So we have part three, uh, emotional body. The soul of the mind expresses many types of emotions through the physical body. So emotional bodies are made up from past life experiences. This entity has urges that are latent and manifested through the experiences in the earth is evidenced by the emotional body. These are personalities. These are that in each soul entity's being that it desires or brings out to show to persons that it likes or dislikes. Material sojourns are as the centers of the material body. The urges from a material sojourns are rather expressed in the latent urges and emotions. Much more is brought by that which the entity has used and applied of its abilities through its sojourns in a material plane. Thus the entity has experienced in this sojourn a great emotional life. The environs then in the earth in any given experience are those things that make for the emotional body in that experience. Just what is my mission in life? Few are feeling it better. Make others better that you meet day by day. Do it in and to the glory and honor of the Christ principle. Why am I restless and settled? Not restless and unsettled in the inner self, but lack of response in the emotional body. Thus keep self in accord. Ye chafe under duty, but do not that as condemn itself. For as the entity has in the past experiences in the earth brought in those varied activities, those influences that come as the emotional body, the emotional self that finds expressions through the sensory forces of an individual activity in the earth in the present, these are being have been not as subdued, but rather as directed into those channels, ways and manners as to become positive constructive forces in the experience of the soul, the body itself as it goes about guiding or directing or aiding or strengthening those that are weak, that are wandering or that are making that effort to realize that the consciousness of the Christ force in themselves makes them aware of the oneness with the creative forces and activity in material planes. In this, the entity is progressing in the present. Uh, part four, 
um, as astrological sojourns. The astrological sojourns are as the mental or dream body. The astrological sojourns or experiences of the entity during the interims between the earthly sojourns find expression in the dreams of the entity. Astrological urges are rather as the latent dreams. The astrological sojourns make for rather the mental urges. The sojourns in the realms termed in material associations by many as astrological experiences are the indications of the various uh, consciousnesses or various dimensions of consciousness through which individuals may pass. That which is innate or that finds expression when the individual soul turns to the creative force of God within arises from the soul's experience in those environments about the earth. Venus, Mercury, Uranus and Neptune are the greater influence from the astrological soldiers, not because these are, appear so prominently in what would be called the chart of the entity owing to its birth, but because of the entity's indwelling and activities through those sojourns there is the interims between the earthly or material sojourns. The astrological sojourns or the sojourns during the interims between earthly incarnations are those that make for urges innate or those that come as dreams or visions or certain sudden hunches or the like which occur to the entity under varied circumstances and experiences. As to the astrological sojourns of the entity in the rounds about the earth called astrological aspects, we find that the indication of such sojourns does not necessarily indicate that an entity has dwelt as an individual personality in that particular environment, but in the sense that each activity, each phase of man's expression or manifestation or the spirit of man is accredited to the planetary aspects. Thus, it may be said that the entity, through the experiences other than material manifestations, has dwelt in or developed or manifested in those environments. As the entity, entity astrologically comes under the influence from the astrological sojourns rather than the astrological positions, so we will find Venus, Mercury, Mars, and Uranus as a portion of the entity's experiences or the phases from those astrological aspects being a part of the innate as well as manifested forces. The experiences of the entity in the environment of the astrological as aspects so-called find expression in the longings and in the visions of the entity. For indeed, the guardian angel is ever before the throne of grace for each and every soul, not by name, lest it be limited, but by the purpose of the individual self as it, it has applied and does apply that concept, that ideal which is chosen through each activity of the entity. For this entity, the expression in the dreams or from the astrological urges is off close in accord with the entity's purposes, for the entity takes counsel with its better self. The long periods of activity of the entity in the astrological surgeons make up or produce a deeper and even more subtle influence, and the entity is deep or subtle or innately spiritual in its nature. Then, as to the astrological influences, these we find are expressed as the innate or dream or mental urge. While urges are indicated from the astrological sojourns or as emblems, as well as the material or the earthly experience, know that none of these urges surpass the will of the entity to make that as may be set as its ideal, which should be the ideal of this as well as every other soul that the light as is set in him is the way, the truth, and the proper understanding. Urges latent and manifested arise from sojourns in astrological aspects, not that a sojourn in Mercury, Mars, Venus, Uranus, or Jupiter forces the entity to act in this or that manner as a reaction to urges or opportunities, but rather it is as a training, just as the practice of much that is latent and manifested in the emotional life is from the earthly sojourns of the entity. 
Because of its training, its environment, certain urges arise. So from the astrological soldiers, later urges are manifested. Just as in the material soldiers, the application of self-respecting latent and manifest urges brings the highly emotional nature. As to the urges that arise, these, as we find, come more from soldiers than from what may be called the astrological urges. Hence, that which the entity has builded in the experiences through the earthly sojourns outweighs the innate urges from the astrological sojourns. Yet the astrological influences weigh upon the dreams or visions or hopes, yea, even the fears of the entity. Here we term these astrological sojourns not necessarily because of the position of the stars or planets or any phase of the moon or the sun being an implant impelling influence, but because rather that the entity is a part of creation and a co-worker with the divine influence or force. For in that creation in which souls of men were given the opportunity to become aware of the, those forces without themselves, when time and space began, there was given that incentive for each entity, each soul, in whatever environment it might be, to make a manifestation of its the entity's awareness of its relationships to the creative forces of God. Urges from the material sojourns coming through the emotional forces of the entity. Though this entity has had such a varied experience in its earthly sojourns, that is not an emotional entity, rather a reasoning individual or entity. The astrological aspects or the influences from the cosmic or astrological surgeons during the interims between material surgeons are presented first, for they are innate forces and manifest in the longings, dreams, the hopes, those things that appear as from nowhere within the consciousness of the entity, activated to be sure through the very mental abilities, but mind is merely a way in which there are spiritual, mental and material aspects of relationships, all conditions find material manifestations. The astrological influences finding expression through the dreams, the longing, the hopes. If one will analyze that in indicated as to the manner the means chosen by creative forces to manifest to those in the material plane, as the entity has done at times in its experience, it will be understood that visions and dreams are of the manners for which one applies self to bring about a materialization of the hopes and desires. By astrological sojourns, we mean those phases of our or the entity's own sun's environment. Thus, to each consciousness, there has been accredited certain influences in which the astrological aspects become a part, not because of this or that position of a planet at the entity's birth or any particular phase of the consciousness or, or of the urges, but because of the environmental force in that consciousness. As we find then, the entity is influenced by Uranus, Mercury and Venus, Jupiter and Saturn with Mars. Now we come to the final, uh, fifth and final part of our book, and that's uh, planetary solution. So it's more like a focus on each of the planets. <clears throat> and they're all tied in all these uh, forces or influences manifest through each of the of our uh, glands. So we'll start with Saturn. Uh, the key word is change. In Saturn we find the great changes which have come about. Yet if the entity does find itself, it will be through paralleling purposes and aims with the promises of the Christ. In Saturn, we find that making for an influence in which the entity has found and will find more and more those of new new conditions arising, changes coming about. In Saturn, we find that influence of an ever-changing nature, of a seeking, of a renewing, of making starts. And this must be tempered ever with that which it answers from within, that the choice made the chosen path the way in which that sort must be accomplished is in keeping with that ideal that is held, is set before self. 
in Saturn we find as indicated in the many changes that have come into the experience of the entity even in this particular sphere or plane, for it is the now and how to use it that may be constructive in that experience. In Saturn, we find there have been many sudden changes in the associations, the activities, and the purposes, the guiding influence in the experience. And as these changes have come in each experience, first has been that of wonderment and as to what to be done, then that which has seem to be good has brought those influences wherein they have not always satisfied. Saturn we find the influence from which them is the new beginning, ever the constant wanting to rub out and begin over again, the constant change that arises. Neptune uh, for water and mystical or mysterious. In Neptune, we find always mysterious to self as relation to others, and especially as to the environs, and innately has the waters often called to the empty as a place of abode. Yet in the application of self as respecting the same has been well. In Neptune, we find those things of the mystic nature or the mysterious. Hence, we find those things that pertain to amulets, charms, or those things that deal with the influence that arises from the environs of certain kinds of music all become a portion of the entity's experience. In Neptune, we find an influence that is most in the making in the present experiences of the entity, so that those things that are mysterious, those things that are psychological, those things pertaining to, what, to the mental mind of man, are the mysteries of life are ever present and would bring to the experience of the entity and this sojourn much that may be helpful, beneficial, if used or apply the right in the experience of the material things of this entity. In Neptune, we find the inclinations for things that have to do with water and over water and to be on waters and upon waters. In Neptune, we find things pertaining to air and water have an influence in the material as well as in the social life of the entity. And these also must be as adjustments to the purposes and ideals of the entity in its relationships to things as well as to individuals or conditions which arise in the experience. From those activities in Neptune, we find that those things pertaining to water or the elements are an influence or are part of the latent or manifested experience of the entity. Mars uh, stands for anger. Uh, that's where we get our influences or forces of anger and activities from. So Mars brings that abundance of energies, activities, rather than anger. Anger to the entity is a fearful state. Do not let that which you fear come upon thee. Replace same rather with patience, constancy, and most of all, consistency. For consistency is a gem which few souls acquire in its interpretation or understanding in speech or in conversation with others. In Mars, we find those tendencies to become easily irritated that arise from apparently to others no cause at all. In Mars, we find that of wrath or madness, a high temper, oft is an urge to be super sensitive to those things that may make for direct control or those things pertaining to persons or to those as related to the persons. In Mars, we find those tendency, tendencies off for the entity to become rather in the manner of too easily misdirected by considered slights or little differences that arise between associates or individuals. So there's a bit of conflict. Or well, there are tendencies for what in others would be rough to the entity closes the activities of the entity rather than to argue the question with anyone accepting a slight and misunderstanding rather than to be too antagonistic. The influence in Mars we find making for anger and again a temperament, yet bringing into the forces those things where anger, wrath, war, turmoil, strifes among groups and individuals have made for sudden changes in the activities of the entity in its relationships to material life. From the experiences in Mars, we find the inclination, inclination which has been indicated for the activities that make for the head strongness and activities in that direction. In Mars, we find that, that tendency at times to become easily erratic, easily ruffled. Venus, love and beauty. 
and the influence as seen in Venus, we find with that ability to apply, to manifest, to show forth the influence of love's application in the life of self of others. In Venus, we find the beauty, love, home. These are latent and manifested forces in the experience of the entity. In Venus, we find as these, with that builded in the present experience, one capable of influencing others by the little niceties and pleasantries that make for the natural turn of the individual, hence that as is termed a pleasing personality. In Venus, we find those influences where love or friendships are to the entity as sacred condition, being then one of a home-building nature. In Venus, we find make for the experiences where there has been a growth in the experience of the entity in the present. The gentleness, the kindness, the love of friendships, associations and relations that find themselves manifested in the material world in the form of the closer relations and body in the expression of the entity that have meant much. In Venus, we find that love, kindness, gentleness may bring out that which is best in the entity self innately and in the abilities to do things. And while affection is a portion of the entity's inner self, this to the entity must be rather a bubbling over than just words or expressions. In Venus, we find the lovely becoming the expressions in activities in which there is the beauty seen in love, in companionship, in association, in music, in art, in all the things that we speak of the loveliness, even of nature and the material things, rather than the expression of same in the earthy form or manner. Uranus, uh, the extremes. What the entity thinks or feels at times about its associations is also governed in a manner by the extreme influences from the soldier in Uranus and makes also for the interest in the occult and mystic. And if there is the opportunity and makes same for the entity in its activity to portray the actions or emotions tending towards the nature's partaking of the occult forces or the occult sources, in such portrayals, may the entity excel in its own activity. In Uranus, we find the extremist influences that have been experienced by the entity in the present and that come as urges in the experiences day by day. Oft from that sojourn or environment in the Uranian experience does the entity find itself impelled, as it were, to do this or that, which may be entirely at variance to what reason or cold reason would tell the entity. Uranian influence makes for extreme, so that we find the entity often is in the position of not questioning when it should and questioning when it shouldn't, and these produce experiences that have not always been easy for the entity during this expression. The Uranian ex ex influences makes for those interests in that which is of an extreme temperament, as may be seen at times in the body being very economical and others quite a spendthrift at times tendency towards those things of the nature of the spiritual attributes, while at others there is an abhorrence to anything that would be binding, even going to the extreme of being communistic in its ideas or tendencies at times. From Uranus, we have the influence towards the occult or the mystic or psychic forces, and these abilities are to be reckoned with within the experience, for these take hold upon the soul's and direct the spirit of individuals, as well as being far-reaching in effect upon others who may be prompted by the activity and the experience or life of the entity itself. Uranian influence are for the extremes, very high, very low, in the face of human endeavor or human experience. In the using of same, then, as they turn to the occult or mystical forces in the experiences of individuals, they tend to make for the activities in which individuals give credence to numbers, days, seasons, or become, as it were, superstitious to this or that form. <clears throat> These are manners of expression of this influence. As to how to use same, then, keep the mental and spiritual self attuned to the harmonies of the timing, as it were, in human experience and endeavors, to keep these in accord with developments rather than the groveling into such as to become part of the surroundings that are belittling to the ideals of the entity. Mercury, intelligent mind. The Mercurian influence makes for the high mental vision, without body, without form, without running to influence, 
that are standardized, but giving expression rather in the bigness of the littleness of the thing for its spirituality and activity in same. In Mercury, find one of high mental abilities, as indicated by the manner in which the entity or present body progressed and progresses in the ability to gather in information of any character or nature, as indicated in the work in the schools, as indicated in the work in associations with groups or individuals. In Mercury, find the mental attributes that are so well manifest in the abilities of, of the entity in the present, in its association with problems that concern others, in developments of mental abilities of others. In Mercury, you find that influence bringing an aptitude in mental capacity and abilities. That then to which the entity may apply itself mentally is accomplished. For the will's influence is strong in the present experience, and when guided or has its basis in the spiritual life, spiritualistic influence in the life, there may be builded that as will bring for the entity advancements in the mental, the material, the social, the financial world. In Mercury find the high mental ability and with the influence that make for capacities in well analyzing the mental reactions of individuals towards people, things and their activity. In Mercury find those influencing the body in the present in the mental abilities as to make for one of high mental activity, one that is given to self to note details and to be detailed in the activities of self pertaining to things of material or mental aspects. The last one, Jupiter. Jupiter has the influence of being universal and benevolent, uh, being very good. Jupiter becomes the universality of force and nature and matter and activity with the expression or use in mass rather than the individual toning or tenor or activity. In Jupiter, we find that as will make for an association with large concerns, whether material, spiritual, or mental, giving a broad vision in many a field. In Jupiter, we find the loving, helpful nature, the desire to be kind, so that's benevolent. In Jupiter, we find the universal consciousness. In Jupiter, we find the benevolent forces, thus the inclinations for the entity improve the environs for everyone, wherever the entity may sojourn, or even journey for a day, two days, a week. In Jupiter, we find also the abilities to meet individuals of every walk of life, to be associated in many environs and many activities of individuals in varied active experiences. So, just a reminder that you're a special soul, you have spiritual gifts from your soldiers around the solar system, and you have past life experiences or resources that you can tap into. And these are mental, spiritual, and physical. Thank you.